Hi, this is Lisa Van Gammert, the Gifted Guru, and I am here to share with you the two ways that I use to work easily with images in PowerPoint. Occasionally, what I have is I insert an image into PowerPoint, and the image is so enormous, it's hanging off the side of the slide, and I have to try to go capture the image in a corner and pull it back down. But the problem that I get is that sometimes it moves up to the slide above or even down to the slide below, and it's just a pain. But there are two simple ways around it that I'm going to show you. The first way is this. Just insert a shape the same size as the slide. So I click on the Insert tab, and on that ribbon you'll see where it says Shapes. I'm going to choose this rectangle because a rectangle is the size of a, or the shape rather, of a PowerPoint slide. I pull the shape out to be the same size as my slide. And now I double click in that shape in order to change it. First of all, I'm going to take away the outline because I don't want an outline showing. And then under Shape Fill, I click on Shape Fill, and then down below you see that I can select Picture. I double click on that, and it's going to open up my the file where I have pictures. Then I can just simply select any picture that I want to be in there. So let's try this balloons one. Now what I have here now is actually a rectangular shape that is filled with a picture of the balloon. But because it's the same size as my slide, it actually looks like the slide. But as you can see, I can move it away. But why would I want to? Because now I've done exactly what I needed to, which is to make my entire slide screen filled with this image that I want. Now I can do the same thing. Let me insert a new slide. I can do the same thing actually with any shape. Watch, I'll do it with, uh, let's find something cool. Let's do one of these stars down here. I can do the same thing with a star. Well, this is basically a call out. I'm going to take out these um, text boxes just to make it easier for us to see the shape. And I'm going to make this bigger so that you can see what happens if I fill something with it. So. I have this shape now. I can double click on it again. I'm going to get rid of the outline, although I could leave it if I want to, but for my purposes I'm going to take it out. I click on picture and let's go down. We can use that exact same balloon one just so you can see how it looks different with that. Now I'm only getting a section of it, but you can do the same thing with any shape that you want. So you simply put in the shape under Shape Fill, you select Picture, choose the picture that you want, double click on it, and it will insert it into your shape. There you go, a different image there. And you can leave, if you want to, the shape outline. Um, I could pick this color outline, and then I could increase the weight of it so that it would show more. If I want an outline, I can do that. So that's way number one. Now we're going to look at way number two. Slightly more complicated, but gives you a lot of options. This is the website PicMonkey, and at PicMonkey, you can do basically a lot of the same image manipulation that you would use like with Canva or even Photoshop, although it's not as powerful as Photoshop by any stretch of the imagination. It still is really useful and for our purposes, a perfect solution to any problems that you might have using images in PowerPoint. So I'm gonna select Design, which allows me to create a canvas whatever size I want. So I hover over Design, I'm gonna choose Custom. The size of a PowerPoint slide is 1,024 pixels by 768. I plug in those numbers, 1024 by 768, and click Make It. Now I have this PicMonkey canvas that's the same size and dimensions, basically, as a PowerPoint slide. On the butterfly, which is the overlay feature, I can click on your own. That means I can go grab any picture that I have in my files. So I'm going to go um, back into the same file that I had because I'm going to use that same picture of a balloon so that we can compare apples to apples. So there's my balloon picture. It inserts into PicMonkey, 
very small. Uh, once it's inserted here in a second, you'll be able to see that it's much smaller. And now I can move it out to a corner and then I can just pull it out to be whatever size I want. Now, why would I do this as opposed to the way that I had it um, before with inserting a shape? Well, one of the reasons is, is that if the picture doesn't completely fill the screen without going over, it might be slightly distorted by using the fill shape technique. Here, I'm able to move the picture around to fit whatever part of it I want on the slide, because you'll notice right here, this is parts of the picture that would normally be there, right? See, if I move them over, you can see. But I've decided where I want it to hang over the edge. So I can choose that by using this. The other thing I can do is that I can make changes to the picture very easily here. I can fade it out. So if I want to add text onto the top of it, I can without um, having the text compete with the vibrancy of the color of the image. I'm going to actually leave it here faded at 29% and close the overlay and show you how if I click on the two T's, big T, little t, that's where the text screen is. Once I get to the text, I'll be able to put text right over this using the features that are in here. I can also use their overlays if I want to add something else. So I'm going to add Didact Gothic. Um, which is the same font actually that I used on the first PowerPoint slide here. And working with type in PicMonkey is much easier than working with type in PowerPoint. So I can say up, up, and away um, with PowerPoint. Now I can change the color of the text to anything I want just by sliding around over here. Let's let's leave it pink just for fun. I can change the size of it here. There we go. And I can then just drag the box out to make that fit. If I still don't feel like it's showing up enough, I can do a couple of things. I can add another overlay back to the butterfly. I can add a geometric overlay, perhaps a rectangle that I then um, pull out to cover up the space where my um, text is. And I can make it uh, fade out and then send it to the back by right clicking on it and saying send backwards and then now it's showing up and I can actually change the color of this overlay by clicking something else. So I could say up, up and away with PowerPoint and I can make the background fade more or less. So let's say I'm happy with this, which to be honest with you, I wouldn't use this, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to pretend I'm happy with this. I click on save. I title it whatever I want. I'm just going to call it demo. And I can save it as either a JPEG file or a PNG file. And I'm going to save it to my computer. And we'll, I'm not going to save it in the images file because I'm actually not going to keep it. I'm just going to put it on my desktop and call it demo for our purposes here. It's downloaded. So now I'm just going to go back to my PowerPoint. And I'm going to click on insert. And I'm going to insert a picture. I'm going to navigate to my desktop because that's where I put the image. I'm going to scroll down and find it. There's my demo image. And now you see I insert it and it's the exact same size as my PowerPoint slide. And so if you want to add some design features, some design elements, you want a well-designed slide, PicMonkey is the way to go. If you're more interested in doing something very quickly than the inserting the shapes one that we did here with our balloons is the way to go. So I'm just going to review that one very quickly in case anybody needs, oops, sorry, in case anybody needs a little refresher. So I'm just going to insert a new slide here. I will click insert shape rectangle if I want it to fill the size of the slide itself. Double click on it. Remove the outline 
by dropping down and clicking No Outline, and then under Shape Fill, insert as Picture, and then now I need to actually go to my Images file. And let's pick something different because we've been doing a lot of that. Let's do our birds. And there, now that image is the exact same size as my slide. I hope that this has been helpful to you and good luck working with PowerPoint and images.